Hi, I'm, uh, my name is Alex Lorenz and I'm the volunteer at the Holland Aircraft Museum. I've been here for about four years now. I found this museum by pure chance. My day job is a structural engineer, which is not that far off from uh, aeronautical engineering, I believe. I've been here now every weekend, trying to help with uh, to my museum with the skills I have, which is mostly 3D modeling and a little bit of woodworking. My project that I'm working on here is a DH-71 Tiger Moth. It's the very first Tiger Moth, the original one, which is not a biplane as many people would think, but a very little one-seater monoplane, which was an experimental aircraft built for uh, high-speed research, being able to do about 200 miles per hour in 1927, which was pretty fast for the time. So when we started this project of DH-71, one of the things that I offered to the museum was to actually model, create the model of the airplane from existing sketches and photographs that we could find on the internet and uh, through the research. And the outcome was the uh, print on the 3D printer in scale 1 to 30 of the, of the airplane. This uh, made me think of building in the full scale. So I offered it to the museum as an idea. Let's let's do it proper full scale uh, replica of it. It's a bit challenging as we don't have any existing drawings. One of the things that we are doing nowadays is working on the wing grips, which you can see the typical section here. This is actually my very first wing grip I ever made. Don't tell the museum. This is the progress on DH-71 so far, after about two years of work, mainly on Saturdays and on my own until recently, where we turned into a team of two. So, this is the fuselage of uh, DH-71 Tiger Moth, built entirely of wood, which is mainly aircraft spruce and uh, birch plywood. There's a lot of techniques I had to learn on this, which is, was a brilliant part of the research of actually how this airplane was built. I've done a bit of reading about 1920s techniques, how to build aircraft and try to replicate it. So for example, uh, this fuselage was built in two halves, the main frames, left and uh, right side of the frame, and then put together with the bulkhead and with uh, this plywood skin on top of it. You'll probably notice a very odd shape of the airplane. They are not usually this curvy for 1920s aircraft. This was actually built to be the most aerodynamic as much as possible. So if, if you look at the silhouette of this, it uh, reminds the silhouette of a standing man, which is exactly what they've done. They took a test pilot of uh, the Havan Aircraft Company and put him against the wall and drew with a chalk around his silhouette to find out the smallest possible shape. And basically the whole aircraft was literally just the engine, fuel tank and the pilot. When you look at the, down the fuselage, you will see there is nothing else left there for it. So, uh, finally finishing off the tail section of the fuselage, hopefully this year. Next year moving to completing the wings. Once that one is done, the, uh, the idea is putting this one under the roof of the new hangar, which should be very exciting. Hopefully before then, there will be a chance to actually show this to people on the ground and maybe get kids to climb into the cockpit and pretend they're flying as this will have all the controls on it. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to work on this project it's thanks to the Dehavan Aircraft Museum. It's amazing that although it's run entirely on, on the volunteers how much it achieved over the last 50-60 years, how, how, how long we are around. It's uh, very very amazing that you can actually go as a visitor into this museum touch and feel the aircraft it's not like most of the museums where you've got red tape, don't touch, don't look, don't sneeze. This actually encourages people to have a go, touch it, feel, feel the structure. And it's also amazing that if you decide to volunteer in this museum, there's so many opportunities in, uh, what you can do here. Whether it's the manual work or just the research or even showing people around, it's all amazing. So if, if you're at home and no one is listening to you, the best thing is to go to the museum and talk here to the visitors, there will be plenty of it.